Okay, what I'd like to do with you today is take a look at the parts of a skeletal muscle. So to give you an idea, we're taking a look at any old skeletal muscle, biceps, calf muscle, whatever, and we're going to be cutting it in half and looking in the blown up portion here, uh, we're going to be taking a look at all the parts. Now it's important to know the parts of a skeletal muscle so that we can understand and explain further detail of what's going on to get a muscle to actually contract. All right, so there's a bunch of terms here, and to kind of get started with it, keep in mind that as we're naming things, there are wrappers and there are bundles. So this outermost wrapper that surrounds the entire muscle itself that I'm outlining in red right now, it all extends down here, and it's going to extend all the way to the tendon. Okay? This entire outer wrapper of the muscle is what's we, what we call a fascia, F-A-S-C-I-A. Okay, fascia is the outermost wrapper of the entire muscle. Now, on the inside of that is also a second wrapper. And much of our body is set up the same way, where we have body cavities and everything. It's not just one layer of wrappers. It's actually two layers. So just on the inside of your fascia is something called the epimysium. Epi meaning outer, mysium referring to muscle. Now, you might think it's kind of weird because we see epi meaning outer, but it's actually the innermost one. So be careful with that. Fascia wraps the entire muscle, epimysium is on the inside. Okay, so if we pull those two away, what we're going to see is we get our first of our bundles. This is a bundle of muscle fibers, okay, a bundle of cells. And this bundle itself, really close to the word fascia, this bundle itself is called the fascicle. Okay, again, it is a bundle of muscle cells. Now, just like everything, we have to have two layers or two wrappers to it. So the outermost wrapper of a, of a fascicle, okay, the outermost wrapper of this bundle, and it extends all through here, and indeed it even uh, extends on this side, so that's where it gets a little confusing for us. Um, but this outermost wrapper of the fascicle is what we call a perimyceum. The inner wrapper of all of that, okay, I'm just going to outline in green here so we don't get too confused. The inner wrapper of the fascicle is what we call, what we would expect, an endo. Endo meaning inside, an endomycium. So these are wrappers to the entire muscle, or fascium, epimycium. We have inner wrappers uh, that, that line the fascicle itself, paramycium followed by endomycium. Okay, so if I get rid of those guys, if I pull them away, what we're going to see is that the, the fascicle falls apart. And so what's going to fall, what's going to uh, be inside of all this are muscle cells. So that's what we're seeing here, this big structure um, that we see is comprised inside the fascicle. These are muscle cells. So we call them biofibers. Okay, fibers are actually cells, something that we don't tend to think about. Now, uh, to give you a sense of size, you think if you're uh, eating a steak and you got a piece of meat stuck in your teeth, you think that those are the myofibers. They're not. They're actually the fascicles. So we're thinking a little bit uh, smaller. These are microscopic structures. Now, because it's a cell, we're going to see that, just like any cell in the animal kingdom, we're going to see that it's going to be lined by a cell membrane. Not a cell wall, but in plants. A cell membrane. And so within a skeletal muscle, this cell membrane is called a sarco. Lemma. Another word for this is a sarcoplasmic membrane. Now, on the inside of that is a network, a communication system. We call it a transport system. Back in general biology days, you talked about that endoplasmic reticulum either being smooth or rough. The smooth ER or rough ER. Well, this is an endoplasmic reticulum. This is a sarcolemic uh, uh, reticulum. So we would give it exactly that name. We would call it the sarco. Plasmic, okay, referring to the circle lemma, referring to that cell reticulum. This comes into play when we're talking about how muscles will be contracting what needs to happen. It serves as a reservoir for calcium ions and so on. So, sarcoplasmic reticulum is extremely important to be able to see. Now, within the sarcoplasmic reticulum, if we pull that and the circle lemma away, you're going to see that we now have this little structure found inside. We wouldn't what makes the skeletal muscle a little bit different than any others? Um, we see inside the cell, they're actually made up of little tiny things uh, inside. And I use the word little tiny uh, actually more descriptively than you think, because we call these, instead of fibers, we call them myofibers. 
frills. Okay, now you'll see inside the myofibrils, I've got them outlined in red and blue. We call those things collectively, the two of them together, right here and right here, they're inside the fibril. We call these myofilaments. There are two types, and that's why I have different uh, colors for those. Myofilaments, they are going to be actin and myosin. And it's kind of weird and deceiving when we look at it from the side. I'm just going to erase a, give me a little bit, myself a little bit of space here. But really what's happening is the myosin is going to be in the middle, and it kind of serves as an anchor for things. And it's set up, the actin actually surrounds them. Actin is the active portion of the cell. It's actually going to be the part that when a skeletal wall cell has to move, the actin is what moves. The actin moves in this way and this way. They contract toward the middle. And so the actin is the blue and the myosin is on, it is the red. We call this structure that I just drew, this entire relationship between actin and myosin, two actins to one myosin fibril, um, we call this a sarcomere. Again, a lot of terms here, but keep in mind that the sarcomere, whatever happens uh, biochemically at that level to get the muscle to move is what's happening with the entire muscle. So we're going to be analyzing that next, taking a look at the parts of a sarcomere. But for this section, you need to understand that the sarcomere is the basic, most fundamental unit of a skeletal muscle. Whatever happens at this sub-microscopic uh, uh, level, whatever happens at this level is what happens at the macroscopic level to explain how the entire muscle will move. Okay, so label up your diagrams with that and make sure you can tell me the difference between each of those sections.